Designers know people like a nice looking package. According to YouTube, over 80% of viewers of this channel have no interest in audio at all. They're just looking at my package. SVS is a smart company and watch my bookshelf or floor stander video. And knowing I'm more of a bookshelf guy, they sent me their ultra bookshelf speakers. Smart SVS, but SVS must not have watched my many other videos with piss poor sound, video quality, crappy editing, and my insistence to harp on negatives at the start of a video so that 90% of viewers aren't watching when I finally get to the positives. Not so smart SVS. Everyone likes a nice looking speaker, but as a first rate audio company, SVS also knows that aesthetics without function serves no purpose. So the slanted front face isn't just for looks. SVS calls this time aligned cabinet geometry and it's nothing new, having been around for about 40 years. But the cost of designing a cabinet that isn't a simple box is more expensive and therefore something rarely seen in lower cost speakers. And this design is not based in theory, but science. If there is an offset between the woofer and the tweeter, a tilting of the main lobe occurs. In most cases, this tilting of the main lobe won't cause any issues. You won't hear it, that is. But why risk it? There are also crossovers that deal with the issue so you don't have to mess with the cabinet design. So a speaker company can choose to ignore the issue, hoping their customers won't hear it and therefore be able to manufacture a cheaper enclosure. They can also decide to use a special crossover or in SVS's case, modify the cabinet design itself. Personally, I like the choice of modifying the cabinet. There are too many perfect squares and rectangles in speaker design. And this looks pretty cool. We get a decently large six and a half inch woofer. And I think a relatively large one and a half inch tweeter. With sensitivity of 87 decibels, a nominal ohm rating of six and power handling up to 150 watts. These bookshelf speakers are theoretically capable of producing 109 decibels at one meter. But seriously, is anyone going to sit just one meter from their bookshelf speakers? More realistically, you'll be two meters away, where they should be able to produce 103 decibels. I usually sit three to even four meters away. And if these could hit 99 dB at that distance, that would be an impressive performance from a relatively inexpensive and relatively small two-way bookshelf speaker. Now I just said, relatively inexpensive, not inexpensive. At $600 each, I wouldn't call them cheap, but they are $800 less than a pair of Audio Craftsman Lavals and $1,000 less than a pair of Mofi Source Point 8s. Those are two speakers that I absolutely loved, but unlike other reviewers, I don't care about price. My dad pays for everything. I rate on an infinite scale. You decide if the price matches the rating. It's why I don't do these stupid best of videos. I actually think my subscribers are capable of thinking for themselves. Speakers really don't have an interface like so many other devices do. So let's take a look at the rear to see what SVS has given us. The speaker bonding posts are nice. Not the best I've ever seen, but they are very nice. And with two sets of bonding posts, you can remove the pre-installed terminal if you want to buy amp or buy wire them. All of my testing was done conventionally. Color. SVS sent me the gloss black. Yeah. Gets a little dusty, gets a few fingerprints on it. And if I were planning on putting these speakers in a media room or a home theater, I would opt for the black oak veneer. I know gloss white and black gloss are all the rage right now and they're great to look at. And for pure hi-fi, your choice doesn't really make a difference. But where video is involved, you want as few light reflections as possible. I imagine, sadly, a lot of people will buy the gloss versions 
while using them in a home theater or media room application. Sure, they'll tell you, and probably make a comment on this video, that it doesn't bother them. They don't even notice it. But they are lying acoustic heretics who should be shunned and their names will be hung on the altar of Apollo and never allowed to join our autifier religion until they repent. As always, I listened before doing any testing and also after 200 hours of pink noise breaking. I connected the SVS Ultras to my reference Yamaha AS2100 integrated amplifier and Yamaha CD2100 SACD player. And I began 600 hours of Bish Palooza. So could Bish hit 99 dB from three meters? The short answer is hallelujah. Let's start talking about bass. With a six and a half inch woofer and specs down to 40 hertz, I'm expecting not only to be able to hit those low frequencies, but I'm expecting control in those low frequencies as well. There are lots of speakers that can hit a low frequency and at that point be overpowered by distortion and sound terrible. So how were these six and a half inch drivers down low? They were good. The Audio Craftsman Laval, which uses a six and a half inch woofer as well, and at an $800 per pair premium, exhibited a little more control in the deep bass regions. But you're not giving up a lot in this department with the SVS Ultras. They dig deep. And while I'm always going to want a sub, if for no other reason than to hit 15 or 20 hertz, I could see a few people with limited space simply opting to go sans a sub. Mid-range is always tricky. With a two-way, that crossover has to be done correctly to eliminate issues when the small one and a half inch tweeter is taking over for the larger six and a half inch woofer. But technology, manufacturing, and testing has gotten a lot better over the past few years. And SVS actually implements those things and thus manages a near, and I mean near perfect handover. Male and female vocals were very, very good. And the mid-range, was smooth as butter. Trouble is where I have a little bit of a nit to pick on the SVS Ultras. This speaker claims to go up to 40,000 hertz. I played test tones and can tell you this is a fallacy, a marketing ploy, if you will. Using test tones after 20,000, this speaker went dead silent. It literally dropped off a cliff. Sure, my SPL meter was still uh, showing some kind of values coming through, but I couldn't hear anything. My golden ears couldn't hear a thing above 20,000. So I threw my SPL meter into the trash because it was clearly broken. But back to the highs. What I could hear under 20,000 was phenomenal. I was really impressed that this one and a half inch tweeter played with so much detail. However, oh yes, there is a however, it's just a bit bright, brightly tuned that is. I would imagine on purpose to accentuate the treble region. This is confusing to me, not that there aren't a million speakers that boost treble, but because SVS went out of their way to design a cabinet using the science of time aligned cabinet geometry, but they didn't follow the science all the way. They still went for that elevated treble. Why go out of your way to ensure the physical design that is scientifically proven to be acoustically accurate and then create a trouble region that doesn't quite follow the science all the way to the end? The good news is that the brightness is linear and controlled, so it will be very easy to EQ down to your preference. It's always easier to bring down frequencies most of the time because you won't have to introduce distortion by cranking up something that the driver simply cannot reproduce. Overall, the sound of the SVS Ultras is very enjoyable, but I would still strongly suggest a subwoofer as the drop off under 45 Hertz is significant as anyone should expect from a six and a half inch driver. SVS makes some great subs, so it could be as easy as a one-stop shop at their website to get everything you need. Our bone test is to simply determine how good the structural integrity of the cabinet is. Some people just rap on it. 
we want the cabinet to resonate less than 5 dB than what the bone speaker's SPL is without being attached to the cabinet. Some people use accelerometer tape, but they're way more advanced than I am. So we're going to stick with the bone test. Now, 0 dB would be the best, but it's probably the equivalent of 5 feet of concrete enclosure, so you're not looking for 0 dB from any speaker. Go to Home Depot and start buying Quickcrete if you want to make your own speakers. But under 5 dB is phenomenal. So let's see how the SVS Ultra performs. Okay, this is a noise floor in our room. Just under 14 dB. And now we're going to turn on the bone speaker and get the reference level in the air. Okay, you can see from one foot away. We're at 20 dB. Let's just say one up. We're going to go at 19 dB. Now we're going to put it on. And you hear the click. We're somewhere between 19 and 20. Once again, phenomenal. Two decibels. That is wonderful. The enclosure not being a perfect rectangle in no way hurts the cabinet's ability to remain inert. Let's go over my in-room measurements. Remember, this is not an anechoic chamber. So don't confuse my in-room measurements with what you see by more competent reviewers like Aaron at Aaron's Audio Corner. The first thing you probably noticed is I cut it off at 20 kilohertz. I didn't want to get into some tit-for-tat in the comments section because my microphone showed these speakers hitting 40 kilohertz when my ears have already proven they cannot. The next thing you need to know is my measurements were done at three meters, not one. Like all speakers, the Ultra measures differently on and off axis. You'll notice bass takes a bit more of a hit when towed in about 15 degrees. And this is how I listen to them. However, to create that great imaging, I needed to keep them towed in. You're going to have to tow them in somewhat, no matter what, no matter what distance they are from you. But since I sit three and a half meters from the speakers, I may have needed to tow them in a bit more than some of you will. In my listening experience with many speakers, the difference between the ultras on and off axis measurements are a little bit more pronounced than others. So you will need to get them set up at their best sounding position in your room before playing around with the EQ. Distortion is well under control at 80 decibels. You're thinking, big deal. Most speakers are well under control at 80 decibels. So as a reminder, these measurements are done at three meters, not one. So it's really about 90 decibels if you're trying to compare apples to apples. And distortion under control at 90 decibels is pretty damn good. SVS has created a very competent speaker at this price point, but price has nothing to do with my ratings. So when we award the Ultra Bookshelf a 2022 Turley Zinfandel, a $35 bottle of Red Pleasure, and then pair it with Pastasada, you know exactly where these speakers stand amongst the competition. Is that a look of confusion on your face? Pastasada is a Greek braised beef recipe and it's comfort food while at the same time capable of being served in a fancy restaurant. And like Pastasada, the Ultra Bookshelves can serve you in a relatively low cost or even a high-end audio system, and it won't seem out of place in either location. What an interesting speaker this is. It's small and plays loud, and it's not too expensive, but it's just a little bright. Nothing would keep you from building a two-channel hi-fi system around these or even a full-blown surround system. They're a little too small for larger rooms, but I had no issues with them in this room, which is 15 by 23. Sadly, this would have been a much, much more interesting and entertaining video if the SVS Ultra Bookshelf speakers sucked, but they don't. So that's all from this episode of The Scientific Audiophile. Please remember to subscribe and like. And remember, have a great day.